And now, uh, last but not least, is the third piece of legislation, uh, which is a resolution to make congressional membership a lifetime appointment. Uh, so, some background on the bill. Uh, it creates a system of lifetime appointments for all members of Congress, senators, uh, representatives. And this happens uh, through having elections on March 1st of 2015. Uh, and once the individ individuals are elected in these elections, so all congressional elections, House elections, Senate elections, all across the United States, uh, then they uh, then they serve for life. So once they're elected, they never have to go through another election. After this uh, 2015 election date, they are members of Congress for life. Um, so the legislation uh, additionally uh, provides a situation in which congressmen, congresswomen can be recalled. Uh, so if uh, or they can lose their seats if they like take illegal action. So unless they're recalled or if they take illegal action, meaning they're not serving like in good faith uh, or on good behavior, uh, then they're going to stay in Congress for life. So uh, what's the problem? How does the legislation solve it? First, uh, as the amendment argues in the whereas clauses, uh, congressmen have become obsessed with elections, uh, particularly if you're in the House of Representatives, you get two years. Uh, to uh, serve in office, and a good chunk of those very short two years are either spent actually back in your state campaigning or campaigning, uh, like preparing for the campaign, uh, receiving funds, uh, getting ready for the campaign, uh, making decisions that uh, reflect your desire to become elected or to get, become reelected. So politicians are very preoccupied with the election, with the process of ensuring uh, that they get to keep their job. Um, and that's problematic, as the legislation contends, because congressmen uh, should be focused on making decisions that are best for the people, not necessarily decisions uh, that should uh, are that like will ensure that they are elected. So you can uh, draw an obvious uh, parallel to the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court are uh, justices appointed by the president, confirmed by the Senate, lifetime appointments. They make decisions uh, because they never have to be, hopefully they make decisions because they never have to face election, based off uh, legitimate, real interpretations of constitutional law and case precedent. They never have to worry about public judgment, so they make the decision they think is best. This legislation wants to ensure that congressmen can do the exact same thing, that they can make decisions uh, based off of uh, like they, what they believe is right, rather than making decisions that they think will get them elected. And also, uh, whenever I say congressmen, know that I mean congressmen and congresswomen. Uh, it's a bad force of, uh, like, a habit, a bad habit. Um, I apologize if that's offensive. I should say congressmen and congresswomen. I just wanted to be really clear. Okay, uh, so what are some benefits of passing this legislation, some positive impacts? Uh, first, it enables legislators to make decisions uh, that are best for their country. So this is what I was talking about uh, in the problem. Congressmen, very simply, will not have to go back to the electorate. They won't need to necessarily follow public approval or public opinion polls. They're going to be able to make decisions that they believe are best for the country because they never have to face election.